You know, Mr. Speaker, it would be very hard to take a call uh, in the first reading of the Taku uh, Time Warner Bill, as I call it, without making some reference to a little bit of history. I want to first say, though, that we do support the bill on this side of the House. We support it to the committee, to the committee stage. And I'm uh, excited that the Minister has decided that this uh, bill will go to the Māori Affairs Select Committee. And the Māori Affairs Select Committee will hear submissions uh, from all around the country, hopefully, and we'll put in a, pr a process to, to ensure that that, hap that, does, that, happen, that does happen. I think 2011 is a bit too far away for it to come back to the House, though. There's no reason why, in my view, why that couldn't be done in such a short time frame. But nevertheless, it's another opportunity 
uh, to revisit some of the issues. And it's a rare opportunity, Mr. Speaker, and I consider myself fortunate to be still in the House today um, discussing uh, the Taku Time on the Marine Reserves Bill uh, for a second time. Because some of those issues that were raised uh, during 2003 and 2004, because of the political pressures of the time, and they were highlighted by the Honourable Peter Dunn, were not able to be addressed at that time. And this is a good opportunity for us to revisit those issues. I congratulate the Minister, uh, because his support for the bill tells me that the previous Labour government got it right. There's no doubt about that. The previous Labour government got it right. And regardless of all the hype and emotion around the traps, up and down the country, um, by some, and many of those in this House, uh, at the end of the day, there are very little changes in this particular bill, apart from title, the title of the bill, perhaps, and a few process issues. Other changes were recommended by the Honourable Dr Michael Cullen in the submissions process, and we're very glad and very excited that the government uh, conceded that Dr Cullen was probably considered to be an authority, if not the only authority, on these types of matters, and that they decided that the, those uh, recommendations forwarded by the uh, Honourable Dr Michael Cullen on behalf of the, the opposition, of the Labour opposition, were taken into account. Of course, I thought I heard the uh, member for Tauranga say that's, that's not right, that's not right. Well, he's only been here five minutes, he's only been here five minutes. So you never know, he'll, he'll, learn, he'll learn something over time. He'll learn a bit more over time. <clears throat> but Mr, Mr, Mr Speaker, it was a very, very difficult time. As Shane Jones uh, described, a hair-raising experience. Well, it was for many of us, uh, sitting out there on the forecourt of Parliament, um, listening to the haka and the chants uh, coming from as far away as the airport, we were told. Uh, there weren't 50,000, there were 20,000 according to the official police count. But not, 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 uh, um, notwithstanding that point, it was a very, very, um, as Shane would say, uh, here is, in, my, in my case, it was a very unforgettable uh, uh, experience. And I say that because regardless of, of who they were, and Shane referred to Ngā Momo Tangatakatoa Aotearoa, Aotearoa, and I believe the minister referred to them as well, regardless of uh, ethnicity, of uh, religious persuasion, all those types of differences that we have that make us different from each other. Uh, there was this great mass of people who came all the way to Wellington, to the parliament, to express a, a point of view about a very, very important piece of legislation. I'm not saying that they all understood what it was all about, but I will say this one. What we see today is a good uh, piece of legislation, but it falls well short of what those people were promised at that time. But putting that aside, and I thank the Honourable Peter Verdun for his comments. This is an opportunity for every political party in this House to come together to resolve this long-standing pain in the proverbial, because that's what it is, pain in the proverbial. And I believe that we actually can uh, resolve it as responsible people in this House. I don't agree with, um, with the ACT member, uh, David Garrett, and I appreciate you, you have a strong point of view, but I actually don't agree with, you, with him, rather. Um, you see, sometimes the best way to resolve these issues is in the back rooms of Parliament. When, we search, when you say, you know, grubby deals in the back rooms of Parliament, shows me how much respect you have for the Cabinet, because that's where these, these uh, deals are done, by a proper process that is, that is controlled strictly by the Cabinet manual. And the people who represent us in Cabinet, we consider to be the honourable people, regardless of our personal views of them. And so if, he's, if the member is saying that we shouldn't do uh, settle fall short and seabed customer interests uh, for Māori in the back room or in Cabinet, does he suggest we take all of this stuff away from Cabinet, including treaty settlements, treaty negotiations, away from Parliament into the courts, telling now there will be no settlements? It, 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 there will be no settlements. And they aren't grubby deals, they're actually honourable people who come down to represent the interests of their particular groups. But having said that, Mr Speaker, I know I'm running out of time, this is also an opportunity for me to acknowledge some colleagues who stood with me, my, with myself, Parikura Horamia, Nanaya Mahuta, shoulder to shoulder out there on the four courts of Parliament. They're no here, longer here today, 
And I mentioned the Honourable David Samuels. I, remit, I acknowledge the Honourable John Tamihere. I acknowledge the, the Honourable Parikura Horomi. I'm sorry to interrupt. The Honourable Member, his time has expired.